Well, welcome back. Tonight, Scope's a channel on a mission to make the United States the safest country in the world through robotics. Today, we're going to be diving into some discussions around AI and uh, joining us as always, William uh, Santana Lee, the CEO. Welcome back again, sir. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. That's the game plan here. It seems to be the conversation of choice in the last, and especially with the rise of robotics and how AI is playing into a lot of different fields. You feel like it kind of really resembles what you guys are doing, because I'm sure this is something that correlates one-to-one -one with you. So maybe I might just ask you, how are you guys introducing AI to your products? I think that's one of the curious things we've often found where folks are like, well, you know, when is Nightscope going to start using AI? And to me, this is a fascinating question because We've been operating out in the field for years. Uh, the company's, uh, you know, over a decade old, and we've been using AI before the, you know, the term was uh, all over the headlines. Uh, the machines use AI to read license plates. In order to uh, read a license plate, you need to kind of first detect the vehicle, then read, you know, that there is a plate there, and then you actually have to read the plate. Uh, so that's optical character recognition. And then you need to be able to do that in weird angles and times of day and different weather, um, as opposed to when you come into the airport and your car is parked, there's a bright shining light on it and you get a perfect picture and you can just read that real simple. In our case, you know, you might be in Kentucky somewhere at four o'clock in the morning, it's foggy out, you got a like weird angle and you need to be able to kind of read that plate. You can't do that without machine learning and, and AI. Uh, to detect a person, for example, trespassing uh, a location uh, with a moving camera, uh, that's uh, also very difficult in different conditions. So you need AI to be able to do that. For the machines to patrol autonomously, uh, a lot of folks, you know, I sometimes tease people, you know, it's not like Barney Rubble or Fred Flintstone are inside the machine kind of you know, pedaling away. Uh, these machines need to dynamic uh, work in dynamic environments where there's a lot of cars or a lot of people and replan uh, and rethink where they're going to go next. That's all artificial intelligence, uh, all the stuff that we design, engineer, build, and, and support, uh, including autonomously recharging uh, for these machines to run 24-7 on their own. So no one's remote controlling these, uh, like level five equivalent, I guess, on the automotive side of things. And um, it's a deep, deep use of AI in a practical application in the real world, generating millions of dollars of revenue uh, and now that we've operated over millions of hours uh, in the field, uh, we've started to gain that competitive advantage. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the insight. And just uh, as a, a follow-up question here, I think it's interesting that you kind of uh, abbreviated to kind of self-driving because I think that's what most people think of when they think of autonomy and AI. But uh, with what you guys are doing, it's it's one of the more approachable um, places to kind of build out you know, the autonomy side of it, because it's not nearly as integral as having to deal with like high speeds and, you know, people and random objects getting in front of a car. But let's say, how do you take your robot and put it into the field of, say, these casinos or these hospitals? And how do you start training that model? Is it something that you have to go in and um, pre-prep some of the designated areas for? Does it just free roam? Like, how does it learn these uh, different locations? So it's very much analogous to a self-driving car. And mostly self-driving cars uh, do have to, you know, map an area and uh, in a high definition way um, and be able to kind of plan around things there. Uh, in our case, you know, we do have, you know, let's say we're up and down a nine story parking structure. There's vehicles coming every which way. The machine needs to be able to uh, navigate uh, through all that. And so the opportunity there is we looked at it a different way. So instead of trying to do a 4,000 pound unmanned vehicle on a public road with random conditions, random environment, and I often say, you know, lack of an insurance framework, a regulatory framework, a legal framework, uh, and no safety framework, you know, please make sure that this works 100% of the time. It's kind of a a little bit of a dumb engineering assignment because it's really, really difficult. You're trying to do the most difficult thing first. Uh, so what we did was kind of do a more crawl, walk, run approach. Let's get this to work one to three miles an hour in a geofenced area um, and see if we can get it to work consistently 24-7 uh, with the client down your throat um, that's actively monitoring what, what you're doing and actually utilizing your technology for public safety, law enforcement, security purposes. Uh, and now that we've done that, we'll start uh, looking up at uh, at higher and higher speeds uh, for more uh, larger and larger products so that you can evolve the, the technology in a more sane manner as opposed to trying to do a you know big leap uh, to the to the thing that, you know, frankly, if you look at uh, 
a lot of the failures or massive setbacks uh, today. I think Apple even announced, you know, they stopped work on their autonomous electric vehicles. You know, our, our friends at Cruise and Waymo and and Zooks and a few others, you know, they've got uh, a lot of brain power, a lot of horsepower thinking through all this. It is technically extremely difficult, uh, but we're really proud that we've now operated more than two and a half million, million hours across the country uh, fully autonomously. Yeah, I think it was beautifully stated, and I'll pass that off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below, and consider subscribing uh, as news catalysts, of course, come down the wire. We'll bring it to you here. But on the note, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Bye.